there are only two ways to live your life. One is as if nothing is a miracle. The other is as if everything is. Einstein said that. And now that I've said it, Einstein and I have got something in common. <laughs>
I just found that place. You know that place in your mind, there's an mm -hmm. anchor place where it's just you. Yes. It's that place where you, when you shut your eyes at night, right before you go to sleep, it's only you. And yes. I thought, this, this is me. This is my anchor. This is my real estate. No matter what happens to yes. my body. Yes. I, this is mine, and yes. I am going home for yes. Christmas. And yes. this was early November, and the exact right person to rescue me came into that place as a customer, but he, he, uh, he rescued me, and I was home two days before Christmas. That's and I thought, this is not gonna change who I am. And I still apply that today, like in everyday life. It's yes. never let anything or anyone change the way you think about yes. yourself. And when I returned home, yes. I was so traumatized. And yes. that's the thing, you have to survive the surviving. Yes. Constantly, every day, I thought I was gonna die. I, I mean, I thought, I didn't, yes. every day. And they were gonna ship me off to another city and this guy got me out. So it's, it's frightening, but at the same time, yes. I'm, cannot let yes. fear and shame stop me from sharing my story. Yes. Because I know that the, it's fear and shame that are the traffickers' weapons. Absolutely. And the traffickers are banking on yes. the fact that victims and survivors will stay silent out of fear and shame. They're counting on that. And when I think of yes. that, I think, no, no, mm -mm, baby. And most of my message to, to people is that no matter what has happened to you, no matter, no matter what is happening, yes. the, what adversity, you have the power, yes. you have the personal power yes. to change your life and change your future and the power is in the present moment. I got an invitation to do uh, a comedy show in, a, in a, a federal penitentiary, okay? <laughs> and I was really excited about it. I was like, are you kidding? I'll do it, man. And so I walked out there, and uh, it was all these men, right? And they were some of the baddest, meanest, toughest men I have ever seen. And they were sitting on these folding chairs right there, and there were no guards, and you know, and and uh, I thought, I got this, you know, I, I, I got this. I, I, <laughs> I just went into autopilot, right? And I just started doing jokes, but, but they weren't laughing. And uh, then I see this guy starts to make these hand motions. And in prison, I learned later as a drug counselor, in prison, <laughs> they do hand motions. That, it's a language. It is a hand motion thing, okay? Well, I didn't know that. I thought he was doing closed caption for the hearing. <laughs> And I thought, boy, I'd like to know what that guy, you know. And then I realized, and then he was getting laughs on his hand motion. So I figured, he's a hand motion heckler, right? I mean, like, he's saying stuff about me. You know, it got real scary, right? And I, so I, I, I did something no comedian should ever do. I, I've never done it before or since. I walked on my own act. I just said, oh, well, hey, people, I won't take any more of your time. Oh, that's my show. You know, I walked off. And I, I just was so ashamed of myself. And I went out in the lobby. And so this man comes walking over to me. And he's a Latino guy, an older man. And he had a folding chair under his arm. And he said, do you mind if I sit down here? And I said, not at all. There's, then I thought to myself, there's plenty of room here in the loser corner, you know? Like, like, and so he sat down beside me, and he began to tell me some of the most profound spiritual truths I've ever heard in my life. He started telling me how he was doing this extended sentence and how he was, he was in, and in his cell, he had learned how to meditate and the things that he had discovered as a result of that meditation, that building block so much. And he was telling me all these wonderful, profound things and it was just beautiful. But my ego was just working on me like you're a bad comedian, you walked on your act. And I couldn't really give him my full due because I was so wrapped up in myself. And then he said, are you listening to me because I'm trying to cheer you up? Oh. And then I realized I thought I was going in that prison to do something, to teach something, to whatever. But I was going in that prison because there are no mistakes in, in my universe. Anyway, there's no mistakes. There's a plan. And I realized that the plan was for me to go into that prison and learn that lesson. And I thought, you know what? I know now that even the worst, in the worst place, there is human kindness and profound 
beauty when the show was over and the prisoners were leaving, you know, they were shaking our hands, right, the comedians. And uh, I'm shaking, I'm telling, you know, whatever. I said thank you to the Latino guy. And I, and I look across the room and there's this great big huge guy and he was as huge as like an NFL, NFL offensive, I mean huge, and he had like a great big scar on his face and he's looking right at me. And he came over and he just took my hand and he looked me right in the eye and he said, now when you go back out there, you remember what you learned in here. Never let some jerk change the way you think about yourself and never give in to fear. And you know what I told him? All right! <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I shared that story at the end. And thank you very much, I'm Marty. <laughs>